I am here, I'm just waiting a minute in case people want to connect. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be with you here today. Um, did you enjoy the snow? I thought it was beautiful, and I was grateful that it didn't affect the roads too much. I know Monday was my day off, so I cozied up with some hot tea, and I put my recliner next to the window to be able to watch the snow, and I uh, read a good book. It was pretty relaxing. Um, but anyways, uh, today I really am in the mood to count my blessings in the midst of this pandemic. I think it's important and uh, I think one of the healthiest attitudes or emotions that we can express um, when we're facing difficult times is, of course, gratitude. And gratitude is something that is very important uh, throughout the scriptures. Uh, and it should be an everyday part of our lives, I think, too. So I know we've been slogging through this thing for nearly a year, um, and I'm in the mood to get my mind off all the things I'm missing and focus on all the blessings that I have, so, you know, to kind of lift my spirits a little bit. Um, so um, when I read the scriptures, um, one that really jumps out at me often uh, is in the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 27, verse 17. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And I'm reminded that I have people in my life who care about me, uh, people who are godly, uh, people who love me unconditionally. And I am blessed to have those people in my life. I know uh, I was having a Zoom meeting uh, yesterday with the bishop and um, some other colleagues. And one of my friends started a group chat over Facebook. And uh, there were just four of us in there chatting together, commiserating together that we couldn't be together, but also thankful that we were able to just be open uh, about our struggles and our hardships with one another, even though it was just typing, you know, um, but it was really cathartic and, heal and, and healing, and it brought to mind the fact that I'm loved, and that there are people who I am close to, um, who I love, and I realized that I need to be even more intentional about nurturing, nurturing those relationships and those friendships in this difficult time, and I need to, uh, make that phone call, even if I'm not really feeling up to doing it at the time. You know, I know I'll feel better if I do, if I do reach out and talk to my friends, even. I may not feel like it, but if I do it, I know I'll feel better afterwards. And so I encourage you too in this difficult time to consider your friends and the people who love you. Um, don't allow our physical distancing during a pandemic to keep you from nurturing uh, those relationships and those friendships. Uh, these friends of mine, they bring out the best in me. And as I said, there's that that uh, proverb, Proverb 27, 17, as iron, sharpening, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. If you have um, people who bring out the best in you, people who uh, are seeking after the Lord, people who love you unconditionally, then they'll grow you just as you'll grow them. Uh, that mutual friendship will benefit both of you. Um, one of my friends always asks, what am I giving to this relationship? What, what do I add to this relationship? They don't have as much money as I do, so I'm often you know, being generous and buying the food and spending more on vacations, etc. But that person means so much to me, and I've grown by our deep uh, friendship and relationship. Um, by the, the deep conversations that we have, the honest sharing about areas where I need inner growth 
and the value of that friendship it cannot really be measured. And so that's how I always respond back when that person is asking that question or wondering about that. You know, I'm, what do we add to our relationships? What, uh, what can we give? Well, we give ourselves and we are vulnerable with one another. We share with one another. We challenge one another. Um, we encourage one another. Um, there's all kinds of ways that we contribute to our friendships. And so I'm eternally grateful for people like that in my life who sharpen me by their love, who challenge me, who care enough for me to be open and vulnerable and intimate. And so I'm just today, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about how grateful I am for those people who are in my life, who make uh, the pandemic bearable, <laughs> you know? Even though we can't be close together physically, you know, I can still foster those relationships. Another thing I'm thankful for, of course, is my family. You know, we're separate. I looked it up uh, before we, uh, before I started the the reflection today. We're separated by 522 miles, and the Google Maps estimate is an eight-hour and 22-minute drive. Now, I'm a little bit of a speed demon, so I'd probably make the trip a little faster. Uh, but I'm happy that even though uh, my family and I are separated by quite a bit of distance, um, I'm still extremely close to my family. I'm happy to see my family happy. I'm happy to be able to talk with my mom a couple or three or even four times a week sometimes. I'm happy that I'm, uh, I, I sometimes see on Facebook, there's memes out there that of, you know, mom calling on the phone and it says, I'm happy that I can still experience this. Uh, and so I agree, uh, when I see my mom calling me on the phone, it makes me happy. I'm happy that I'm going to have a niece born tomorrow. My sister is scheduled for a C-section tomorrow and I'll be able to spoil my niece and uh, see her via FaceTime. So please pray for my sister, by the way, uh, as she goes in uh, tomorrow. But I'm also happy that a couple of times a year I get to spend vacation with my family and that I can't wait to be together for those vacations because we enjoy one another's company so much and we love one another so much. I know that families aren't perfect and I know that there are oftentimes difficulties in families, but I hope that you too are blessed by your family. I know that Proverbs uh, chapter 17, verse 17 says, friends love all the time and kinsfolk, they're born for times of trouble. And here we are in times of trouble, but our families are there for us. Um, and it, they're there to love us and to encourage us um, through these difficult times. Psalm 133 uh, verse 1 says, Look at how good and pleasing it is when families live together as one. And like I said, there's definitely difficulties and there, there are times when we are divided uh, you know, over particular issues within our families. But um, we need to focus ever more, I think, on uh, being united as, together as a family, uh, lo our mutual love for one another, uh, allowing that to bind us, our faith uh, to bind us together. Um, and we are blessed to have people in our lives who are there for us in times of trouble, who act together as one, maybe not all the time, but most of the time. Uh, and so I'm grateful for all my provisions and am blessed enough uh, to be able to give back too. And uh, I hope that you experience um, that love of, of the people in, in your life as well uh, and recognize the value of having family uh, who love you and that you are encouraged by it in this difficult time. And I can't express how fortunate I am to have uh, the, uh, so many blessings in my life uh, as I, if I really sit down and think about it and meditate on it and consider it, you know, I can't express how fortunate I am to even have food in my pantry and my refrigerator and a warm place to live and a car in the garage and more than enough clothing and clean water and so much more. Uh, just these basic necessities make me rich compared to many of the people in this world. You know, there's millions, even billions of people who are struggling each day for any or all of those things. And here I am not only able to 
enjoy the bare necessities, but also to enjoy, enjoy them in quantity and, and quality. You know, not only do I have food in my pantry and food in my refrigerator, but I have good quality produce and uh, good quality food and, and able to really uh, possess um, very high quality products and because of the blessings of living in the country that I live in and um, being fortunate to have the family that I've had and to be raised with the education that I have. And, and I try to remind myself of this often because if I simply you know, look down the street at my neighbors and compare myself to them, I might forget how rich I am. I, you know, I don't have to keep up with the Joneses. In fact, I can choose to buy less and give more and still live an, ex an extremely comfortable life if I make that decision. You know, my car might be a 2011 Ford Fusion with 170,000 miles on it, but you know what? I might be able to get another 100,000 miles out of it, and what can I do with the money I save rather than buying that new car? Well, I can give more generously. I can set myself up for a retirement to be able to bequest my money to causes I believe in. I can live a more philanthropic life, and uh, that's more fulfilling than any car that I can buy. And so I'm grateful that I can make those kinds of choices because I'm so fortunate and so blessed. I'm grateful that I feel a responsibility to give back because God has blessed me so much. And so think about how rich you really are, you know, take stock and you know, not how rich you are compared to your neighbors. Cause oftentimes when we try to compare ourselves to other people who, uh, are near to us, it kind of skews our perspective a little bit. Um, but recognize the reality of the world, not, not just your street, you know, your, your place here in this society in which we live and the world in which we live and, and see all of God's people, see all the people of this world and uh, recognize uh, your place in it, that you are extremely fortunate and blessed. Um, Proverbs chapter three, verse nine says, honor the Lord with your wealth, and with the first fruits of all you produce. And you know, I'm reminded that in, in my heart, if my heart is going to be pointed towards the Lord, if my heart is going to be pointed towards others, you know, that includes my wealth and uh, my possessions and all the blessings that God has poured out in my life. And, you know, Pro Proverbs 19, 17 says, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. You know, that reminds me that when I'm uh, considering the poor and those who are in need and, uh, and those who are hurting and broken and those who are oppressed, uh, when I'm being generous uh, towards others, uh, the least, the lost, the broken, then really uh, I'm lending to the Lord. And uh, because all people are God's people, I'm reminded of uh, John three sixteen and, and 17. And I always try to include verse, uh, verse 17 in there too. Um, that God for so loved the world that he gave his one and only son to die for us. Uh, not just for, for our sake, but for the sake of the, the whole world, all the people of the world. And so when I think about how blessed I am, I, I must also consider... Uh, the people of this world and uh, my responsibility towards those folks too. And then, you know, I, I recognize that as I meditate on this more and more and how rich I truly am, I have very few ambitions to make my life better than it already is. You know, I find myself content and I recognize that I should be content with everything that I have. I am so blessed I should be content. And if I'm not, then if, if I find that on uh, some days I'm not content with what I have, that's a spiritual, that's an inner spiritual issue. Um, that's a personal uh, problem that I need to address in my life. Um, and that I need to, uh, I need to draw near to the Lord and figure out why in my life am, am, am I not content with what I have when I have so much. 
and I'm so blessed. And Proverbs 23 verses 4 to 5 says, Do not toil to acquire wealth. Be discerning enough to desist. Now that, that's a powerful message. The purpose for my toiling, for the work that I do, um, for uh, all that the Lord has blessed me with, isn't to build up wealth for myself. It's not to necessarily better my own life. Um, but rather it's that uh, I might uh, give back and that I might work for others and work for the Lord. And, you know, like I said, I try to meditate on the wisdom that comes from Proverbs and uh, these other scriptures. Often I find the wisdom from the scriptures, they stand in stark contrast with our culture. Our cult culture tells us that we need more to be happy. Our culture um, is oftentimes not a culture of gratitude where we recognize how blessed we are, but it's a culture of consumption and wanting more and uh, always striving uh, to try and find happiness and stuff and things and material possessions. But contentment comes from, I think anyways, and, and the scriptures remind us that contentment Contentment comes from the good feeling that comes from blessing others. True contentment comes from serving in missions and, and seeing the positive impact that our generosity and our giving can have in the world. And contentment is having enough but not desiring more and more and more, being able to recognize uh, the profound blessings that we already have. Um, you know, contentment is not going into debt, uh, but making wise financial decisions and, and doing financial planning so that, you know, we can see how a little bit of savings now might mean the ability to be, be more philanthropic uh, later in life. You know, these are the things that come to mind when I, when I meditate and, and consider uh, these scriptures uh, that are, you know, throughout the Bible that, that talk about our blessings and how we should use them. Yeah, so I hope that you'll take some time to consider your many blessings you know, in this season, in this difficult season, that daily um, gratitude uh, will be a part of your life, that you'll uh, seek after the Lord each day and um, recognize how blessed you are and that you'll foster this sense of gratitude in your heart um, uh, for all the Lord has done for you, even in difficult times. You know, I think it helps to put things into perspective that even though things may be more difficult for us now than they were before the pandemic, we still have so much to be grateful for. You know, I could go on and on and on and talk about my church family and community and my work and calling and all the other things that I love that are a true blessing to me my education and intellect and all the, all the gifts that God has imparted to me. I, I, there's just so much to be grateful for. I, I, I could never express it in a, in a short period of time, the amount of things that I have to be grateful for. And I think that, you, that we can all do that together. Uh, we can never stop thanking God for our blessings because those blessings overflow, even though we may find ourselves in dark times. And I'm reminded of Psalm chapter 23, uh, where the psalmist considers the fact that even though he walks through the valley of the shadow of death, his cup runneth over. Um, God sets a table for him. God anoints his head with oil. God protects him and, and supports him. Uh, God is there for him and, will do, and he will be able to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, even though he's walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he recognizes and has gratitude uh, in the Lord for all of those things, uh, all of those gifts. And so uh, may we remember that today as well. And may we be full of gratitude, just as the psalmist is, the psalmist who's walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And we may feel like that some days, that we are walking through this valley of the shadow of death. We see death around us. We see pain and suffering around us. We see a pandemic raging and, and people we know and love are 
they have the they have the virus and it's it's affecting their lives and um, we may know people uh, near to us, family members, uh, church family members, people in our community who have died from the virus. We may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, um, but the psalmist reminds us that even in that that valley, even in the valleys of life, God sets a table. Our cups run over with blessings. God anoints our heads with oil. God protects us and supports us. And God promises that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So remember those things. And be encouraged and uh, be full of gratitude to the Lord and, and to all of those around you who are there for you in this difficult time. And uh, I want to encourage you that I'm thinking of you and praying for you too. And I ask that you'll do the same for me. And uh, I ask that you would pray with me now. Almighty God, we're so grateful. Um, please foster in us uh, an attitude of gratitude. Enable us to be people who are thankful. Thankful to you and thankful for all the blessings that you've placed in our lives. Help us to take time each day to consider and to remember how rich we are. Um, to see uh, in all the world, uh, Lord, that we are here and we have food on our tables and we have we have family and people who love us. We, we're so rich, and we know that you love us so much. You love us unconditionally, and there's nothing that can separate us from your great love. And Lord, when we remember these things and when we think about these things, our hearts are lifted up. And even if we're in difficult times, even if we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, we know that you are there with us and that you love us and that you are still pouring out so many blessings in our lives. So help us, God, to recognize those blessings, to not focus so much on everything that we're missing, but not to focus not so much on everything that we've lost, but instead to focus on you and your promises and your gifts. Um, thank you for being there for us and suffering with us through these difficult days. Uh, and thank you for each encouragement that you give us especially this encouragement of being able to be together in this way and consider the scriptures and remember all that you've done. So we look back and we know that you've been there for us in so many situations throughout our lives. And we know that going forward, you, your promises will remain with us and you will continue to journey with us. So thank you for being there for us, God. Thank you for your love and enable us to love one another and enable us to be true disciples Enable us to go out into the world and be your hands and feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, it has been a pleasure to be with you today. And I look forward to the next time, uh, to next week, next Wednesday. I plan on uh, doing this again at noontime then. So hopefully I'll see you all then. And God bless you. And I hope you are able to enjoy the sunshine. I look out the window today and the sun is out. It is cold. But I hope that you enjoy uh, the beauty of this day. All right. Until next time. Goodbye.